When I now mention the word sales, normally people immediately run away. So no worries, I am not going to sell you anything here today. Of course, your organization has some sort of sales and marketing approach, except, of course, when you work somewhere in public administration or you're in the lucky situation that enough business is coming in anyway, which, by the way, is only the pre-stage of the part where you need a sales team, so you better be a bit more proactive because relying on enough businesses coming in, coming in anyway is not a sustainable business model. The question is, what are salespeople allowed to do? Which role does sales have in your organization? How to deal with salespeople, not always easy. And of course, how to drive a modern sales team. Looking at the situation right now, I have to say the outlook so far, especially with this year where the pandemic now comes hopefully to a very soon end, I have to say my outlook is not too positive because I saw quite a number of organizations that showed a shocking, a shocking amount of uh, politely said lack of activity. That is the polite, the, the most polite word I can choose here. Um, often sales is way too passive. There are hardly any active parts. People say, oh, yeah, we have a website. Wow, groundbreaking. And you wait that the leads drop in there. 60% are not the leads you're looking for. The other 40, people have nothing to say. You speak to the wrong people. So often sales is not active enough. People often completely overestimate what the market is like. And many people still say to me, oh, the market is going to come back as it was before the pandemic. Good luck with that approach because hoping never worked. I can tell you, if you just hope with no foundation to what you said before, if you just hope, this is not going to work. So be sure that you are proactive on the market because when you, of course, when you now say, well, we are a state-owned organization, the state has 30% of all our shares and they're going to give us enough business. Well, quite frankly, then you're not working in sales. You're working in a nearly public administration position. You might call it sales, but what you're actually doing is you're creating PDFs and you get the deal anyway. Although I have to give you, and that is something which I have to give many salespeople, no matter what kind of sales you are, often the leadership you have to endure, you have to accept is really bad. Often there's a lack of leadership or the leaders weren't properly trained and coached. So what they do with the people is completely wrong from A to Z, from soup to nuts, completely off the wall, I have to say. I saw quite a number of very shocking moments during the pandemic, and I thought that this year might be better, but January alone has shown me, no, it won't be better. We need better sales leaders, because in a minute we're going to look into, when we talk about all the problems now, what we're just doing now, how to do it better. So when you have no feeling for what else can we do, which additional activity can give us access to the market, give us access to clients, create the right leads. And of course, when you have no idea how to deal with salespeople, just look at how you deal with salespeople on the phone. Of course, when you get a call and maybe it's an unsolicited call and you might not be too happy that someone calls you, I can only tell you what my story is with how to do with salespeople. When I was a student long ago I, at the University uh, of Hamburg, I worked for a pharmaceutical company as a student and I got an unsolicited phone call. Someone called me, I never asked for it, and I was very straightforward or better say, I, 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 I was plain rude with that salesperson. And I hung up the phone at the end of being rude and my boss immediately called me into his office and said, Niels, every one of us is the face of this company. We do not want our company associated with a behavior that you have just shown. If you're not interested in a certain service, there's always a way of how to say a polite no. And that's exactly what you should do as well. And by the way, it never is acceptable to ghost salespeople, meaning you get proposals and afterwards you just don't get back to them. There's always an option to say, sorry, we chose someone else because X, Y, Z. Because now we have to look into how to do it better. I now named quite a number of aspects where quite a number of aspects where you saw that is not the right way how to deal with salespeople. So how to do it better. How to do it better, very important in the very first place is when you deal with salespeople, you need a proactive structure. And uh, especially in the English speaking world, I often see organizations where a number of people sit in the room, you call them sales team, 
And when I ask them, what do you do? Uh, one person sends out emails, other person does cold calls, someone else he calls the yellow pages, someone else has a network and does referrals. And when I ask them, how do you structure it that all these approaches, which are all, by the way, valid approaches and approaches that work, obviously, because otherwise they would not sit there anymore. How do you structure them that anyone has access to them? And then there's silence and they say, well, no one, because we are only measured on, on, on making ends meet. So when we get the money in that we are expected to get in, then everything's fine. And often I see that the proactive structure is completely lacking. There is no proactive structure. Anyone does whatever they want. And as long as the money comes in, no one's going to ask you any questions or bother you. That is proper 1990 sales, maybe a bit more 1970 sales. And you can be in a very lucky situation. Either you're on the market long enough now, or you are on the market with a brand that people know, which is on the market long enough, because otherwise you won't survive for long. A proactive structure means that sales has the right to use certain methods. And often people ask me, is sales allowed to cross lines? Yes, they are. They are not allowed to cross the line of the law, not allowed to cross the line of ethics and morals, but they are allowed to cross lines because calling someone without that they ask for being called is, of course, crossing a line. And that is part of sales. If all your sales approach is based on waiting for people to call you, you're not doing sales. You might have a good marketing department, but you are actually administering people calling you. You, you. You're basically an order taker. And order taking, when you only do order taking, that has nothing to do with sales. So be sure that in the first place, you now have to know how do you structure the leadership in your sales team? And yes, you need a sales leader, especially from a certain size. So what you need is, step one is you need to get deals closed. Step two, uh, with good revenue. And step three, with good profit. And by the way, and closing deals and good revenue and good profit. If you only close deals, but the revenue and the profit is bad, you haven't won anything because you're basically doing something for nearly free or even with a loss. If you close the deal and you have good revenue, but bad profit, it looks good on paper and for the liquidity on the accounts, but you have to get more and more and more deals in to cover up the losses you made before. And as soon as the market gets hit by some sort of, let's say, global pandemic, you suddenly don't know what to do. So having deals closed with good revenue, but bad profit is not an option as well. Only having good profit without closing without closing deals and without good revenue is not possible. So that's logically not even an option. So all three aspects, focus on closing the deal. So don't delay things over and over again. Good revenue, which means have good prices, negotiate well where you get your goods, et cetera, and calculate your prices dead sharp because you have to know how much discount if people ask for it is possible. What kind of discount are you allowed to give? Do you want to give any discount? Not giving discounts, by the way, is also market strategy. Because step number three, as I mentioned, the profit comes from being excellent at the first two and then having an excellent salesperson that actually ensures that you get the best profit out of everything you sell there. If you now look on your sales floor and you only see people doing whatever they want and you don't even know what they do, that is the time where you have to question if you are doing it right. Sorry for being that straightforward. But when you try to survive with a sales team that is doing just something, you probably only survive by coincidence. And you can, of course, rely on having more coincidences. You can, of course, rely on thinking you're the best brand. Or you can rely on thinking you're so long on the market, people will always go with you. Good luck with that. As soon as someone else with a more modern approach to sales comes on the market, quickly, especially today, you will be outpriced. And with purchasing departments in place, which are very keen on getting the best value for money, you will struggle very soon. So, of course, we now have to also look at when we want to do it better, because now we had some aspects of how to do it better. Are there any obstacles which we have to avoid? And yes, there are. I give you an example. Number one, have as little administrative effort for salespeople as possible. I'll just give you an example. Um, salespeople still tell me lines like, oh, we meet every Monday morning at 9 a.m. That's how the company works. Well, just because other business units or other departments do it like that doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. 
Another example, I read through a visiting report, visit report. So someone drove somewhere, visited the client, then you have to write a report. And it was four pages long. And I asked, why is it that long? And then the salesperson told me that there is a word count in the system. And every report with less than a thousand words gets into an alarm system to, to some sort of business leader. And then these people call them why the report isn't detailed enough. And they always find something where they expected some more details. But they found out that when you have more than a thousand words, you will never receive any of these calls. So people are typing complete and utter irrelevant stuff. How the weather was, that they had a nice coffee, that the corporate building of the client looks really nice, that the that the lobby was refurbished, completely irrelevant when you don't sell furniture, especially. So keep people away from these administrative efforts. Filling out a CRM system is important, and this has to happen. And there's no question about it. Salespeople are often not good at it. You have to train them how to do it properly. But after that, everything must be focused on very straightforward time management. And as you can hear by my charming accent, I am German. And yes, time management is an important aspect of German life. You have to deliver excellent leadership and give salespeople a lot of freedom because you need to focus on results, not on you have to sit here for X amount of hours or you have to file X amount of these steps in the system or these papers or you have to write X number of XYZ administrative documents. That is that, that is not what sales people get paid for. That has nothing to do with sales. However, I often see an organization that a lot of time and by doing so money is wasted on administration that is very close to being completely pointless. And of course, now when you have proper reports in place with the proper software, for example, you can look at the KPIs, the numbers, the key performance indicators, but be aware that besides the numbers, especially in sales, to prevent that people get demotivated or leave your organization and you have a high employee turnover then, and we all know employee turnover is already higher in sales teams, when you look into the KPIs, this is only half of the game. You also have to look into the CSFs, the critical success factors. For example, what about the mood people have? What about the organizational culture? What about the motivation of your sales team? You cannot measure motivation in hard numbers, as we all know. However, we know that the mood in which they are, the organization in which they work, and the culture of this organization, and their motivation to work for you is crucial if they want to say, Yes, I stay, or goodbye, I leave. Because as soon as you know that you're a salesperson and you're a qualified salesperson, finding a new job is very easy. And absolutely anyone knows that. When you're now looking for something more, of course, there's more than this podcast. If you go to expert.nb-networks.com, just put your email just in there. And once per week, you get an email where everything I publish every week gets sent to you in just one email. 100% content, there's an ad-free guarantee, no advertising whatsoever. However, you might now have questions where you think, hmm, we have such a sales team. Where do I start? How do I implement the structure? How does this proactivity really work? And of course, we can talk about that. Just drop me an email, nb at nb-networks.com, and then we can have a chat or we just exchange emails and or we just have a, have a phone call, whatever you like. doesn't cost you a penny. Of course, when you now say, hey, we need someone training workshop seminars or we have events, can you speak there, coaching, consulting, mentoring, or when you're looking for something a bit more long-term, project, interim management, feel free to drop me an email, nb at nb-networks.com, and we can discuss your ideas or anything where you say, hey, I like a bit of input here. Could you help me on? Yes, I can, and it doesn't cost you a penny because now the most important step is apply, 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 what you heard here today, because only when you apply it, you will see the change in your organization that you want to see happening. And for this week, there's only one thing for me left to say. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>